if all of the math books in the entire world were burnt, and all the digital information about mathematics was deleted, and all the mathematicians suddenly disappeared in an apocalyptic event. But, for some reason, you could do just one last thing. If you have to decide which are the five most fundamental fields of pure mathematics that humanity would have to develop in the years to come in order to rebuild all of our knowledge, which fields would you choose? That's a weird question, I know. But your answer will tell a lot about the way you see the world around yourself and what you value most. Because the way you answer this question will reflect the kind of mind you have and what you choose to prioritize. I'd say that some of us like to think visually, in terms of shapes and surfaces, and how they transform in space. So, geometrically. People like that tend to imagine curvature before applying some kind of a systematic method for measuring it. For them, the world is made of objects that can bend, stretch, or twist, and mathematics is just a tool to communicate these ideas with precision. And there are other people who prefer to think more abstractly or algebraically. For them, the world isn't made of spaces and objects, but of structures. People with this kind of mind ask themselves, what happens when you combine things? What happens when you permute them? They think in terms of rules and transformations, of homomorphisms and isomorphisms, and of how structure persists or fails when mapped from one context to another. If so far I haven't described the way you think, maybe you are more drawn to logic. Not necessarily because you love proofs, but maybe because you want to know the meaning of knowing something. For these kinds of people, mathematics tends to be more like a collection of consequences. What follows from that? What must be true, given the axioms? They are the builders of the foundation, who are always suspicious of leaps which are informal, and they are always really precise and rigorous. Plus, these mathematicians are usually very interested in the boundary between what is true and what can't ever be proven. Of course, there are many other ways of seeing the world and thinking mathematically, but even though I didn't mention them, I hope you understand the point I'm trying to make here. The answer for this initial question is not just technical, but it's personal. It shows not only what you find important, but also how your mind moves through abstraction. Do you think in terms of pictures or more in terms of logical implications? Do you think more about how things look, how they behave or how they relate? It's cool to think about this apocalyptic thought experiment. Because in the end, we're all trying to describe the same structure. But we look at these structures and observe them from completely different perspectives. So even though mathematics is universal, the way we experience it is not. And plus, let's face it, it's a pretty fun question. Now, I'm going to give you guys my own list of five math fields. And you can disagree with me. That's okay. But let us know in the comments and explain why you think so. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video, please do not forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. This really, really helps us. So, here we go. First, I would say geometry. And I think most of you would probably agree. It's the most intuitive thing for us, I'd say, because it gives us the foundational understanding of shapes, distances, and spaces. It's also the first place where we learn how to move from intuition to formal statements. Without it, we don't even have a way of systematically showing if something is true or not. Because one thing is to have a hunch about why something looks true. And another completely different thing is to mathematically and logically demonstrate it. This is what we can learn from humanity's own history, with Euclid's axioms, for example, which were one of the earliest systems where definitions, assumptions, and logical steps built an entire body of knowledge. Not to mention that geometry is pretty useful if you want to start building stuff after an apocalypse. Next, I would say another obvious one, algebra. Algebra let us make equations systematic and help us to work with unknowns. And it's where we first develop notation that is symbolic. Without it, we don't know how to express generality or rules that are true universally. And even more importantly, it takes us to abstraction. We can now manipulate ideas instead of just numbers and shapes. As it gets more advanced, it will go into groups, which capture symmetry, into rings and fields, which show us how numbers and polynomials behave, etc. We can go on, but the point is that all of these ideas are about finding patterns that are deeper than the examples we started with. 
So in other words, it lets us search for generalizations. Because this way of thinking lets us connect completely different areas of mathematics using the same universal language. Okay, now my next point is where some of you may disagree. Mathematical logic and foundations. Because starting here would naturally take us to set theory, formal logic, and so on. This here is the true foundation of mathematics. Logic gives us a framework to work with proofs and logical statements. And it is basically how we define mathematics. Without it, we don't really know what it means for something to be true. You don't know what counts as a valid argument or how to check that an idea is consistent with the rules you started with. Logic tells us what can be proven and what can never be proven, and it forces us to face the limits of reasoning itself. It may feel abstract or even philosophical, but this is the very foundation that holds all mathematics together. My next pick is analysis, real and complex. At this point, we're ready to talk about limits, continuity, and infinite processes. This is where we make sense of what it means for something to get closer and closer without ever quite reaching it. Real analysis gives us the rigor necessary to work with functions, series, and sequences. And complex analysis opens up a whole new world where functions behave in a very regular way, and it's pretty surprising. It leads to very powerful results way beyond what real numbers can offer. Not to mention that analysis gives us the necessary tools to get into probability, dynamical systems, and mathematical physics. And it shows up in differential equations, Fourier analysis, and functional analysis, which is the study of infinite dimensional spaces. And like I said, these tools are essential in physics, in areas like quantum mechanics, signal processing, and also statistics. All of which would be very useful since we just had an apocalyptic event. Before I go to my last one, I'd like to say that if you want to be one of the first people to know when we release our first books and courses, sign up with your email address on our website. The link is in the description. Okay, last but not least, number theory. With number theory, I mean the blend of algebra, analysis, like modular forms, and geometry, something like elliptic curves. I'm not talking just about primes anymore, but about the things that are built on top of them. Number theory begins with very simple things, like counting, but it grows into one of the most abstract areas of all mathematics. It's where some of the most famous problems in mathematics live, like Fermat's last theorem, the Riemann hypothesis, and the Langlands program. Number theory has historically been called the queen of mathematics by Gauss, and it's often seen as the most ancient, self-contained, and intellectually pure domain. I mean, it's been a hard choice, because deciding only on five out of all the areas of mathematics requires sacrifice. But let us know your personal five main areas of mathematics. Ah, and if you like this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.